Hi, everyone, and welcome to AB Conversations, where we will help you CFP your way out of it, a podcast where you get into the minds of a couple certified financial planners on how we think and feel about everyday financial planning questions and what should really matter most to you. A healthier financial life starts now. Hey, Ben, welcome back. Good afternoon, Adam. How are you today? greatest 20 minutes of our week. That's right. And another topic that is sure to stir the pot. Yeah, I, I said it's it's everybody's favorite, but also most hated topic, taxes. Oh, well, you know, taxes, politics, religion, wherever you want to go today, Adam, <laughs> I'm along for the ride. <laughs> oh, man, I don't, I don't even want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. So, All right, yeah, just, so taxes, let's just talk. Yeah, let's talk about the easiest one, taxes. <laughs> yeah, making so, a lot of headlines. So yeah, yeah. please set the stage yeah. for us. It's, yeah, the, it's, it's been floated, right? The, the new proposal by the new administration on, on kind of the tax changes to the tax code. Um, we just want to kind of highlight what some of those changes are, give our quick opinion on, you know, whether the, the, the likelihood that certain uh, changes are actually going to get passed and why, and I guess just give some context. And then hopefully we'll be able to kind of pivot to, let's focus on the stuff that matters, the things that you can control from a tax perspective. Right. Um, Cause there are certainly parts of, of this proposal that, that, that you just can't control it, right? Whether the corporate tax rate goes from 21 to 28, or maybe they compromise and it's 25 to the you's and me's and yep. to our, to our clients. Maybe that has ramifications for the stock market, but in our day-to-day lives, it should be neither here nor there. Yeah, so let me hit on kind of always good to give two quick disclaimers. Well, let me make it three. One, we're not tax professionals, but I think people would recognize that in financial planning, like what we are to do is to be proactive, like help you think about the long game, not the short game. And that's why kind of understanding how your money is going to be taxed, like we want you to focus on later in life when you have to recreate your paycheck you can control some of the timing here. So let's not lose focus on that. But the other disclaimer is, you know, pop quiz, our income tax code came to be at what time in history? Do you know? Nope. It's like, actually, I don't know the exact year either. Like 1915, like 1918. I only remember because like income tax was enabled, was passed to enable prohibition, right? It was Mm. going to replace that lost revenue. But here's the point in bringing that up. If we've had a tax code for 100 years, it's yeah. changed 20, 25 times. Like, so whatever comes out this new yeah. tax code, like. By the way, we vote to... for a new president every four <laughs> years. So it's yeah, once every do, four years, the tax code you do, changes. Hmm. You do the math. Yeah, That's the point. Let's talk about what the things are potentially going to be proposed. Like, what do we really need to pay attention to on that? Because it's not to belittle it. Um, yeah. Let's keep the perspective that Financial planning is about making a plan and being ready to, ready to pivot when that time comes. So why don't we go through some of those hot topics, like you said? Yeah, so I already talked about the corporate tax rate, which we believe for sure. individual clients, unless you're the owner of a corporation, it's kind of neither here nor there. The, the other big one that gets floated right now is that uh, income tax rates on individuals are going to increase. Now, that seems very targeted on the top yep. income rate right now, right? Going from 37% to 39.6, I believe was, was the proposal on, you know, income. I think for that tax rate, it's like 600,000 and above of taxable income. Yeah. The, the, the reports I read that are, if your family makes less than $400,000, these changes aren't going to affect you. Um, If you make more than that, let's certainly talk about it. There are things that, you know, maybe you should be looking to do to kind of adjust this, but the tax rate going up by like 3%, Again, we're not talking about huge increases. This isn't going back to tax rates of 70%, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I guess another, another not, maybe not a disclaimer, but preface this by saying the, there's clearly a targeted intent behind this proposal that it is on corporations and on high income earners. Right. So the, the proposals that are coming through are, are very targeted in that way. So also on the, the personal income tax side is, and I guess, I, yeah, I guess it's an income tax, the, a slight update to the social security tax as part of like the, the payroll deductions, right? Right now yeah. it's capped at 142,000 and change. You can earn above that, but you're still 
only paying on that first 142,000. Right. They want to open that up for income above 400,000. So again, just just levying additional payroll taxes if you are in that kind of that high income earner threshold. It's just where they want to focus right now. Yep. So yep. I, again, I think the likelihood of those things going through is is higher. Um, but yeah. it's, it's yet to be determined where things actually fall, you know, in the end there. Yeah. And I think there are some other ones that we can quickly check through that are certainly making headlines and maybe something that we would need to be very thoughtful in our planning approach with, but seem mm -hmm. less likely. Um, the estate tax certainly could come down. Um, yeah. Exactly. The estate tax exemption. Yep. Um, again, that's going to include very specific people. Um, I think the big one that gave me alarm was that the step up in basis would go away. If someone passed away and left non-retirement assets to heirs, uh, that they would no longer have a step up in basis date of death value. Um, they would have to assume the cost basis of the decedent. That would be yeah. major. However, yeah. administratively, very difficult. Yeah. And they're... Not only that, but it would also the, the way it's proposed right now, there's no there's no threshold. There's no income threshold. There's no asset threshold. So that would be kind of applied across the board, which would somewhat go away from at least the way this proposal is intending to levy taxes on corporations and higher earners. This would affect everybody across the board. So that in its intent may not be uh, directed. And then to your point, administratively, yeah. it's. We, we have conversations with clients now trying to track basis of things that were bought decades ago, and there's no good way about that. So I can't imagine the IRS making that even more complicated for themselves when somebody passes away. Yeah. So is this a good time to pivot then? Is there anything else sure. on that list? Uh, I, I, there was one last thing. Again, it was on high income earners. It was taxing that investment income, right? Potentially capital gains at ordinary income. Right. So instead of the 15 to 20 percent range, it's going to be at that top income rate of 37 or 39.6, whatever it ends up being. So, again, just another slight increase. I shouldn't say slight. It's a big that increase a big on, on those higher income earners. And they're floating out, you know, a million dollars or more of income. Yeah. So then let's package that together. Kind of the, the point that we want to make here is as planners, we certainly understand that we want to be able to control not paying more than our fair share, quote unquote, in taxes in any one given year. But I think it's really important for us to look down the road, as I kind of mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe you can help me just give some perspective here. We can really put any type of savings or investment into three different buckets. You're either taxing me now, you're taxing me later, or you're taxing me never again. So these are the things you can control when you talk about where you're saving, how you're investing. So maybe mm -hmm. let's just go through that so we can kind of keep that big picture perspective in mind when these new tax laws maybe come into play. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the tax, yeah. Where do you want to start? Tax me now. Tax me now. You know, you just, yeah. you were just talking about capital gains. Let's stay there for a minute. Yep. So any, any investments that you have outside of a retirement account is in that kind of tax me now bucket, right? You're paying taxes on it from your income and then you're just investing the difference that investment can kick off dividends, interest, capital yep. gains in any, in any given year and you pay as you go. Right, right, there's no tax deferral. And I think what would also be important to know here is part of the tax me now is giving you financial planning flexibility, right? When we talk about tax me later, it's probably putting money in an account that you can't access until 59 and a half, most commonly when we talk about those retirement accounts. So. Yep. We want to be thoughtful too. You're not getting a tax advantage for putting money there, but you are getting flexibility, right? We've had clients that have done an awesome job saving for retirement, want mm -hmm. to retire at 55, yeah. but everything's in a qualified account. And now you go, man, now we have to jump through some hoops to figure out how we're going to do this. Yes. Yeah. It's the, the recurring theme, I think from now to the end of this podcast is going to be the word flexibility. It goes back to then... <laughs> Paying as you go is also something that you may not be able to control, right? And I think this is one of those misconceptions that we want to make people aware of. If you're invested in a mutual fund, usually your taxes are going to be based on, did you make money? And then when you chose to liquidate it, you'll pay taxes on what that's called a gain, yeah. or if you lost some money, we can actually claim some losses, 
But inside mm-hmm. that mutual fund, there you know is a money manager that's making changes here and there per their investment policy. And if they made some money, even if you didn't do anything different with your fund, they might kick that off to you. And guess what? That's got to show up on a tax return, whether you knew yeah. it was coming or not. Yep. And those, it's, it's confusing because those are also called capital gains distributions, different than the buying and selling capital gains that you would experience as the invest, investor. But yeah, it, those are the distributions that you can't control. As long as, if you still continue to own that fund, it's coming to you, whether you're reinvesting it, you're moving it to cash or you're spending it, you're going to get taxed on it regardless. Yep. So I think it's really important, again, to just kind of understand how those things are taxed, either by your actions or by just inactivity. And sometimes that's why people talk about owning stocks or owning Mm -hmm. exchange traded funds, or maybe some different instruments, investment vehicles that don't have that kind of lack of control over capital gains. Yeah. Yeah. There are certainly uh, investments that are a little more tax friendly within a non-retirement account. Again, the flexibility just, yeah, depending on what you own in different accounts, it's all, it's all specific to the situation. So I guess the moral of the story on that bucket is there is flexibility, there are taxes, but we're really not going to let the specific tax code be the only determining factor on what we put into that bucket and what we invest in. Right. It does have to come back to the financial plan and when you're going to need right. access and what other yes. things do you have going on? Um, yep. Yeah. So if people are a little focused on, well, look, I don't need access to it now and I'm planning for retirement. That's where we'd start talking about that tax me later bucket. And I guess mm-hmm. to be clear, you're still going to pay ordinary income taxes on that <laughs> money later in life. So the tax rates at that time, nobody can know. Right? We don't yeah. know where these things will go or how they will change. To our point, they mm-hmm. change more frequently than we probably know. Uh, yeah. But that's the gamble you're making. Save a buck today to have to pay taxes on it later. And the old adage that I'll put it in that bucket because my tax bracket will be lower in retirement. I don't know, Adam. It's, it feels it's, like yeah. we're probably going up with taxes over time. Yeah, that, that seems like a, a harder and harder sell or at least a steeper and steeper hurdle to feel like we're going to be in a lower tax bracket in the future. And again, the, the idea was in your income earning years, you should theoretically be at a, at a higher bracket than when you're retired. You don't have that steady paycheck. Maybe it's still security in your savings. Again, you, we would hope that you have saved in these different boxes, bu- buckets and can control mm-hmm. your, your taxable income in any given year. But um, yeah, it, it really, it really is situational there too. So I go to another kind of client example that's kind of fresh in our mind. So great to defer the taxes, um, you know, tax me later, but there are rules around that too. I know I mentioned that you can't get to that bucket most often than not. You can't get to that bucket until 59 and a half, but now at 72, they force that <laughs> distribution on you. So yeah. in some ways you're creating a little bit more of a potential tax bomb later in life. Now, if you're going to take that money out to support you anyway, that's fine. Absolutely. Right. That's what it's there for. But we yeah. certainly run into enough clients that they did a great job saving. They're not spending a lot from that bucket. And now that re- you know required minimum distribution hits and boom, that's forced taxation. Now you can't control how much is coming out and what you're paying taxes on. Yep. Yeah. The, the IRS, uh, I think as, as I hope many people know, you haven't paid taxes on these dollars yet. If it's in the tax me later bucket, they want their revenue at some point down the line. And they did change that recently. So now it's age 72. But yeah, they're, they're going to force you to start to take chunks of that out and pay the taxes once you hit age 72 and, and beyond. Yeah. And if you don't spend it all, your heirs will have to continue to take those distributions. And that rule changed recently too. Now it's only 10 years to get rid of it. So the point is, If we're talking about taxes within the kind of lens of you want to be able to control when you're taxed, we know you can't, you can't control these tax brackets, right? You can't control those laws, but if you can later in life control how, how much taxability is going to be put upon you, depending on what you pull from, um, you lose that flexibility when it comes to age 72 and so do your heirs. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that last bucket of the the tax me never, and maybe we can kind of give an example of what we what we mean by, you know, being able to be selective in retirement. We'll kind of just give an example of, you know, pulling from different different buckets to help isolate some some taxes. 
So that last bucket is the the tax me never and the Roth or I shouldn't say tax me never tax me never again. It's yeah. the Roth I, the Roth IRA is a great example in that it's like the first bucket that you're putting money that you've already paid taxes on, right? You're not getting the tax deduction in any given year like you were in bucket two, but then it is growing tax deferred. And as long as you take it out after age 59 and a half, other parameters that you need to follow, it comes out tax-free. So all of that growth yep. is free and clear to you, doesn't show up as taxable income in the future. Sounds pretty great. Yeah, so in our kind of... Pennsylvania Dutch backyard, do you want to pay taxes on the seed or the harvest? Right. Yep. If, I, if I can get all that growth that I'm hoping to see over time to never be taxed, it seems like a huge win, right? I'm giving, I'm giving up the deduction now though, and that has to be the trade-off, but this is why mm -hmm. we say, if you're concerned about taxes going up over time, if you're concerned about no control over those RMDs, this is why starting to, we say it in investing all the time, right? This is why starting to diversify where we have our savings, it's just really, really important. Yep. And I guess, so I'd give the example there too. If we're thinking kind of like biggest picture on then what is passing to the next generation, mm -hmm. your, your, your heirs don't have to pay taxes on that money either. Like when you make the joke, pay taxes never again, it's really what it means. Right. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, I don't even want to say this, but it is the truth, right? Unless at some point the tax code does change on those Roth 401ks, Roth IRAs, that's always possible. But as it stands right now, that is not the case. They are, they are tax-free to you, to your heirs and beyond. So whether those things change or not, we'll go back to the, the whole premise here is you can't control that. We cannot control that. We cannot know what's going to happen in the future. All that we can do is work with the best information that we have right now. And in our mind, that's not to make a huge bet on any one thing happening or not yeah. happening. So yeah. there's arguments to be made for tax me now and keep some flexibility. There's arguments to be made in your situation to tax me later and defer that taxation. There's certainly an argument for tax-free forever. Diversify, spread it out control it that's yep D yeah diversification was the word that that i wanted to use you just said it it's we often think about diversification from an investment standpoint we we'll also like to layer that into tax diversification right S spread out between those three different areas again it just gives you the ability to make a decision in the future based off of those assumptions that we we don't we don't exactly know what that's going to look like but if you have a little bit in every area you can pick and choose based right. on that data in real in real time in the future to just minimize hopefully the the actual taxes you will pay yep to meet your needs so if you're young um, you're accumulating right let's not get tripped up by specific tax code conversation right now let's do the hard work of actually just saving yeah. and diversifying that out if you're in the later stag stages of life where you're in distribution stage and some of these rules are changing and affecting you, great, let's have a conversation. There are ways that we can strategically try to go about this and think about what bucket we can pull from or you even have the opportunity for the most part to move money from bucket to bucket, right? right? There's some certain yeah. consequences to that, but let's go through those trade-offs. So regardless of your situation, let's keep it in perspective. It may not be a big deal. It's good to reevaluate it. Yeah. Um, but again, let's not get too worked up about taxes just yet. Yeah, let's see what actually happens. Yeah, you, you said it earlier, and it's it's wanting to win the tax war, not necessarily the tax battle. It's play play the long game. There's hopefully everyone's going to live a long and healthy life. You can spread this out over a longer period of time, and again, just give yourself the ability to to make those decisions in the future that yep. feel better than they may today. So. Do you want to talk about politics and religion or should we just kind of save that for here? save save that for the next one <laughs> all right hopefully it was helpful i'm sure we'll have more on this uh you know as plans and proposals and legislation whether it happens or not actually comes to fruition but uh in the yeah. meantime keep focused on saving that's it that's a good point thank you all right have a good one adam you too bye
Hey everyone, Adam and I really appreciate you tuning in. Please note that the opinions we voiced in the show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be most appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, your accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to making any decisions or investing. Thanks for listening.